Good morning, thank you so much for taking some time to meet with us today. Um, the whole purpose of today's session is to talk through employee spend management processes. So you kindly shared in our previous discussion that you have some key objectives. So let's talk those through right now. So my understanding from our previous discussions was that you're interested in better controls with your ramble suppliers. You also kindly shared that one of the purposes of your initiative at this stage is to be able to negotiate better with your suppliers as well. So I think that would be good to, to highlight this stage. You kindly shared that one of the other points of the project was really about vendor consolidation. So really getting complete visibility and also being able to see what, what those vendors are spending on. So we're trying to reduce the amount of vendors so therefore it's simpler to manage. So we talk about vendor consolidation. Maybe you can share with me the other one. So um, if I look at um, yourself, procurement officer, um, maybe you could let me know a little bit more about, um, okay, discounts. You want to be able to reduce your cost with your supplies. So getting discounts as well, correct, thank you. I'm just gonna box those off just there. Ultimately, everything that we'll be talking through is going to have the objective of achieving these goals. So, let's talk through where you're spending today, who's spending the money. So, I think that the whole purpose of today was to talk about your employees and the fact that they're the ones who are spending the money across the organisation. Of course, they're spending money on expenses, they're spending money with your different suppliers, and we need to get complete visibility and control around it. So. Um, firstly, let's understand. So, my understanding is your business is in the UK. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, any other areas? US. Okay. So you'll be you'll be trading dollars so and, and some in Europe. So therefore, there's dollars and euros as well. So we know there's different types of spend that's going on in the organisation. So that's our spend. And if you could help me understand a little bit more about exactly what you're spending your money on. So feel free to shout out as we go around. That'd be really helpful. Mileage, okay, so we know that's a, a business cost. What else? Marketing, thank you. It's probably, probably quite a reasonable spend on hardware and software, yeah, okay. We've got hardware, we've got software. What else do you spend? Do some travel, okay, so some flights. Not too many, okay, so there's a little bit of flights, but not huge. What else? Um, what about client entertainment? Yeah, so today, if today goes well, I might get the opportunity to take you out, so um, no doubt you're, you're probably spending on some entertainment as well. Okay. Utility bills, great. Trends, okay, that's brilliant, thank you. Some on hotels. Beginning to build up a very good picture, I think, of your organisation, exactly where it is that you're spending your money. Of course, if anything else comes to light, telecoms, okay, that's good as well, thank you. Perfect. I think that's given us a great overview of exactly where you're spending today. Maybe you could give me some guidance around exactly how much, so what, what sort of spend is going your organisation. I think you, you mentioned around 15 million for, that's a spend with your suppliers, okay, so we've got 15 up here. And I think you're unsure really about the expense. 1.5, okay, we'll say 1.5 million. Perfect. Okay, and so far I think what we've talked through is that an employee literally could go off and they could buy a hotel, they could spend some money on some stationery. Actually, you don't have any stationery down here either. And that spend could literally come through either, couldn't it? It could come through an employee um, expense claim or it could come through from a supplier, so it could be either. So from here, um, of course, we've got, it could go through an expense or it could be an invoice. What happens next in your process? Yeah, that's right, approval. So whatever happens,
what we typically find is that whether it's an expense, whether it's an invoice, it always then goes to the same line manager, same hierarchy within your organisation for approval. So, for instance, if I spent something in the organisation and I was going to take you all out for dinner, it will go through the same line manager as if I was putting together a marketing event. That will go to my direct, that go to my director, Joel. So, typically, we find that these areas are actually consolidated into one area. So, you've got one level, one set of approvals just there. And once the manager's approved, maybe you can give me some guidance on what happens next. Okay, so typically it then goes through an audit process. And when it goes through the audits, that's accounts payable, isn't it? Okay. And once it's accounts payable, so if it's an expense, they're going to audit them, they're going to go through and check. I'd imagine quite a manual task, yeah. Um, and if it's with one of the suppliers, of course, they'll be, at the moment, your organisation, you're keying in data, aren't you? So you get a, yeah, so some are coming in as a, a flat invoice, which is kind of in the post, and some are being in, in emailed across as well. So typically, someone then has to get them into, into your ERP system. So some of them do some manual work to do that then. Then ultimately, once that's been done, it's been keyed into your ERP system, is that two things can happen, depending on which it is. One, is that there's a, a payment run that's going to take place. So one is going to be the employee, and the other is going to be the supplier. And ultimately, I think that gives a pretty good understanding of your process today. So it starts off with where you're spending the money, you know how much you're spending. It could be coming through on two different areas, okay? Everything gets approved, you've got an audit team, you've got an AP team just there, they're checking everything, they're going through, they're keying in the data, it's going into your ERP. At the end of the day, it's going, then the payment process is happening, and it's either going to an employee or it's going to your supplier. Okay, great. So let's just talk through some of the challenges that you see in this area today. So from what we've talked about, a lot of your spend is reactive. So people are going off and they're just making the spending decisions. So if I was advising your organisation, and I bought a flight, I could just go to BA, buy my flight, and I could go and uh, I could fly to the US, of course. Now, in this situation, I think you have a challenge here, which, which actually you want to put some controls around. So before I go off and spend that money, that marketing budget money, on putting together an event in London, really we should have some sort of pre-approval up here. And that's what we really be thinking about. So pre-approval of all spend. But equally, we'll put some controls around that because if it's just for someone going off and, of course, just to buy a coffee, no one needs that. And that's going to be um, challenging to implement. It's also for no purpose. If I'm about to spend £500 on some client entertainment or equally or that, that marketing event for a few thousand pounds, it would make sense to the organisation to control the budgets a bit more and, and have a level of pre-approval of spend. So that's one of the things that we probably start recommending. And that ultimately is going to bring yourself back to some of the controls that you're looking for across the organisation. The next thing that I've just noticed across here is that one of your employees, when they're spending money, it could come through a supplier invoice, it could come through expense. So if we look at these, marketing, where's marketing going to come through? So marketing could come through your expense, or equally it could come through an invoice. I could just go off and expense the fact that I want to do a marketing campaign. I could go off and do an email campaign with a separate company. So that's quite possible to go through that way. Buying hardware and software. That could come through either. I, mean, I believe you're beginning to build, really realise there's a picture here. Flights, you could have um, a P card, you could have a central agreement, so therefore that could be invoiced. Equally, there's nothing stopping me and stopping your employees going off and doing that as an invoice, uh, doing that as an employee expense. You'll notice across each one of these, maybe utility bills is going to stay always down here, maybe mileage will stay just here. However, across the board, pretty much everywhere, it could spent either way and there becomes a significant issue across these two areas because there's got no visibility and it literally the spend could be coming through each way so we'll pick up on that in a second but I think you're beginning to get a picture now that you clearly need to have one consolidated view of data you also mentioned here that you're getting some bottlenecks around approvals to different people around the organization they're out they're they're busy and actually part of their role is is that they, they need to be out being busy so here, we know we've got an, uh, a time issue here on approval, so we need to be able to speed up those approvals. So if I'm going to be part of an organisation, I need to travel to the US, I need to be able to buy that flight, get the approval and move on. So we need to be able to have that. And equally, when things are coming back through 
for the marks event, we want to get these approvals up there pretty quickly. Audit and AP, I think you mentioned you have something in the way of 15 staff. That is, that's a significant number. 15 employees. And what are they doing? I imagine, imagine they're keying in data. That's probably what, what the majority of their time has been spent doing. Um, and I think you mentioned about 1,000 um, non-PO invoices. So, so you've got a thousand, got a thousand non-PO invoices that are coming through. So therefore, typically a non-PO also misses this process of the pre-approval because someone could just sign for it, and then you're going to have a huge challenge with accruals because these invoices are going to come back into the business and they can be sat anywhere. So you've got a real challenge here without the upfront approval to be able to start controlling this spend. So a lot of those, those 15 people probably chasing a lot of the people in your organisation, trying to understand where these invoices come from and trying to get some control around it. So that's definitely an area here which I would, you know, in your situation I'd be a little bit concerned around. And of course, you want to be able to speed up. So these, these points here, you want to be able to increase the time. So there's probably a piece here. How long does it at the moment take you to play a supplier? Okay, so 20 days? Okay, I mean that's, that's a long time. So I think really what we need to be looking at is trying to reduce that over time. So I think that gives us a good understanding, and you'll probably agree with me, that there are some challenges in this process today. And I think the whole point of the project is about becoming proactive. So what I'd like to share with you, what we can look at is against your key objectives, how you as an organisation can start becoming a bit more proactive, but also using data to be able to help you with negotiation with your suppliers and, and really improve the process across the business and reduce some cost. So let's look at this for, firstly. So the first point here was around pre-approval. So we can look at pre-approval. And pre-approval is important because, of course, you need controls. So if you've got pre-approvals in place, then therefore you're going to reduce the spend and have control over what you're purchasing. If you've got then a level of data, so here what we can see is that we've got a data contamination issue. So across here, all different sets of data. So what you need here is data. All across these bits here, so everywhere across the organisation, you're going to have data. So I'm going to put that here. It's the fact that you're going to need business intelligence across every part of here, and that data across all of your process is going to help you with negotiations. So we call that data and we come up with business intelligence. But the key thing about this business intelligence is you're going to have one set of data, one set of clean data, complete visibility into spend across the whole process. So not only is this business intelligence going to help you with your, some of your KPIs across the organisation so you can start to reduce these times, and let's say right at the moment it's 20 days and we need to get this down to five days, you can start to control and start to use the data to say actually let's, let's start managing these KPIs. Another part of the, the, um, the business intelligence and help you with your approvals, you can see actually, is it just a few employees in the organisation that actually is the people that are that are slowing down the approval process? But if you all put it onto the mobile, you can make it a lot quicker for people to be able to approve. Now, this data is also going to help you with your vendor consolidation, because you, you can't manage what you can't see. If you've got the data, it's going to be far simpler for you. Another key point here is about having one single process, one single solution, for to manage the whole piece. So, Having one user experience, so having one user experience across the entire process. So if I'm an employee within this process and I'm raising purchase orders, or equally if I'm going off and I'm travelling, it's the same system. And therefore, once you've got the data capturing everything, that's when it's really moved into your competitive advantage. Another piece over here, I think we need to address this pretty quickly. Got fifteen staff keying in data into your ERP system, which is which is no effect, it's got to be overkill, it must be. So from my experience, you've reduced that by about 70%. Now, one of our next actions from today would be to really sit, sit down with you and put together a business case. 
Um, and that, that kind of business case is one about operational and the second piece is around a cost benefit analysis. And that's to say what we're we spending today, total cost of ownership of this process, and how do we ultimately reduce costs. So that cost benefit analysis will work it out over a five year period and we'll get into, into the real de detail of these numbers of the staff over here which are auditing, which are um, just keying in data, and those tasks can be automated today. So those, those people can be put into more strategic tasks or they can be ultimately used to help use the data to be able to reduce your cost, which is going to then drive your bigger discounts. So that's the whole point here, is about redistributing staff um, and taking headcount out of areas where it's going to be very simple for you to be able to reduce cost. So we, we take here some reduced cost. And the last piece here was just improving supply relationships. So if you're going to pay people quicker, you're going to improve the relationship, of course you are, but it's also going to allow you to get bigger discounts. So for instance, if you're in a situation where you're paying someone and it's a 60 day payment cycle, well how about going to them saying, I'm going to consolidate and we're going to focus on spending specifically with you across your maybe hardware and software spend, there's a good example, and saying, but we're going to agree to paying you within 14 days. Maybe they're a small startup, maybe they actually need that money quicker, and in that case they're going to give you back 5, 6, 10% extra discount up front because they know they're going to get their money back quicker. And that way it's going to drive your discounts, and that ultimately is going to help you reduce the cost as well. Um, I know previously we had um, mentioned that you thought about catalogues. Now, there's a few challenges with catalogues. I think an organisation of your size, you just need to get started, right? So you've got a problem here, which is only getting worse day by day in the fact of the organisation's growing, you're going to have more and more vendor invoices coming in, that thousand might increase to two thousand, of course, with the acquisition that you mentioned. So I think the key thing is here, you just need to get started. So start becoming proactive across the system, across the process, get some data, start being um, pre uh, proactive, and that way it's gonna help you reduce your costs and ultimately achieve your objectives. I think your biggest challenge with implementing something like a supplier catalog is just it's incredibly complicated. And you're gonna, you're gonna end up needing to keep a lot of these 15 staff simply just to manage the system and manage that supplier network. So I think if we focus purely against your objectives here, and then the outside outset of the project, which is around pre-approvals, business intelligence, a single user experience, and ultimately just reducing cost, improving that relationship with suppliers, and that's going to help you achieve your goals. So thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure in talking to you. And um, hopefully as a next action, we can sit down, we can share a bit more information, we can go for a cost-benefit analysis. Okay, thanks for your time today.